All right, to get started, today is about the Weber 30 inch slate update, did it rust? We've had the Weber 30 inch slate griddle sideline for about, what do you think, three months now? Yep, since You're, July 11th. It's probably our last cook. And the point of this video is kind of like twofold. One, I feel like there is a treasure trove of information out there that doesn't necessarily equal good results. The second thing is, is a griddle situation. And Weber came out with a rust resistant griddle. And I felt like the only honest and true way I could do that was sideline the griddle completely. Use it, season it, cook on it four or five times, get a lay of the land and then park it. And the reason is I just don't feel like I could honestly cook on it day in and day out and just let it go like deteriorate. If I see something wrong with it, I'm gonna address it right then. So I would have never allowed you guys to see my griddle looking shabby or or rusty or something like that and continue to cook on it. So we decided to park it. And the point is, is I really wanted to see if I just left it alone, I half covered it, I covered it, I would open the lid some days. I just try to mess with it, I never turned it on. And the point is, is did it rust? Let me show you. Alrighty, excuse the moisture. Uh, when it gets dew and damp, the metal on our awning uh, gets wet and the water drips down. This is, it was not under water the whole time. It had a lid on it and had a cover on and off of it. So this is what we got. I do not see any rust. What I'm about to show you right now is the overlay of the Blackstone griddle that we repurposed. Um, that's been less than a month ago. You can see right there that even the Blackstone griddle within probably two weeks of resurfacing it has already rusted. That is no knock on Blackstone. That's just showing you one of the most recent ones that we've used and then not used, use and not use. Whereas the Traeger, I use a lot more consistently. So I don't feel like, I don't feel like it's a fair comparison because I use it. I think when you use a griddle more often than not, you're um, more likely not to get rust. It's when the griddle sets that I think I see a lot more rust. First thing on the list, I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up. We're just gonna do a snapshot of what I'm doing. I really don't feel like there's a need to really do a lot to the surface. And what I wanna do is basically I'm going to soap and water. You can see right here, we got a lot of mold build up on the stainless steel. That's fine. Um, there's probably mold on the griddle top as well. So once everything's cleaned off and everything's back to new, uh, we'll be able to turn the griddle on. We're gonna add some water, steam it, and dry it off completely, no oil. Once we get to that stage, we'll start the video over. Since we're dealing with mold, it's not a big deal. A little Dawn Power Wash. Now that the base of the griddle looks pretty much brand new, let's get the top cleaned up. So here's a good look at the griddle once it's completely clean, the whole unit's clean, no oils, no nothing. Moving right along. I've seen comments over and over and over again. I just wanna clarify. Everybody has a right to their opinion and you can stand on that opinion as strong as possible. I feel like there's also arguments on the other side. Doesn't mean necessarily which one's right, but I just want clarification when it comes to the Weber. It's a damn good griddle. I've seen people say that they never add oil to their griddle because it already comes pre-seasoned, whether it be in the beginning, cooking, or end. They wipe it dry and just leave it like this. My frustration or my clarification is I don't think that's a long-term good strategy. Just because it comes pre-seasoned does not mean that you, that you can just abandon the oils. You're going to naturally deteriorate the griddle, which is why we preach maintenance. If you think about your mother's cast iron, your grandmother's cast iron, the reason why it's so slick and the reason why people just want that older style cast iron because it's been cooked in a thousand times. That's the idea of a griddle, right? The more you cook on it, those fats naturally get on the griddle. You warm your griddle up. Anything above basically 400, quote unquote, is going to start burning the oils into the griddle. So you might not think that you're seasoning your griddle, but technically you are with the foods that you're cooking. And I just want a clarification because you guys think I'm an idiot as it is. On Weber's website, 
and I completely agree with them. Cleaning and maintaining the griddle, dropping down to number three, after you've already cleaned it. Apply small amount of neutral oil, such as vegetable or canola oil, across the griddle surface. Number four, using paper towels, rub the oil evenly around the entire cooking surface. Use more paper towels, if needed, to wipe up any excess pulls of oil. 100% recommended. Right? If you're leaving your griddle dry, I do not think it's a very good idea for long term. If you don't wipe up your pools of oil, you're going to start noticing beading. This is a very, not finicky griddle, but since it does come pre-seasoned and is so uniquely different than like, let's say a rolled steel, like the Blackstone Traeger, Pit Boss, and stuff like that. There's two different Pit Bosses, ceramic and uh, rolled steel. That a lot of times, this doesn't take a lot of oil because there's not really a lot of places for the oil to seep into the metals and polymerals. So it doesn't take as much oil on this as it would like a, a very, like imagine a very, 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 very well seasoned Blackstone. It won't take much oil, but the less seasoning it has, the more oil it's going to take. This typically takes way less oil. Last but not least, really and truly the reason why I want to make the video. There is a treasure trove, like I mentioned earlier, of information out there. And I think this is the number one headline that I see. Not only people asking when they very first get it, when they start looking at the Webers or people that's already got it. This is no knock on the people that feel this way. This is just coming from Weber themselves and my experience myself with all the griddles out there. Okay, we can list them. You guys can see it on the videos. I'm not here to boast. I'm just talking about pure experience. Should you season your Weber slate griddle before you start cooking on it? The answer and the honest answer is it doesn't matter. It seems like people are having success not seasoning it. And there's also people out there that swear that you have to season it. There's also people out there that swear up and down. Do not season your griddle. Weber says it comes pre-seasoned. You shouldn't have to. Let's look at Weber's manufacturer manual. This is what Weber says before you cook. It is pre-seasoned with a food grade oil to provide rust protection. Therefore, initial seasoning is not required. But if you choose to add another layer of seasoning on your griddle, please see the instructions below. Even Weber says, you can cook on it right away. But if you want to season it, there's no harm, no foul. It's more, in my honest opinion, about maintenance, how you carry your griddle throughout the time that you have it. Skipping right along, number seven, the griddle now has one coat of seasoning. You should continue to scrape and season your griddle every two to three cooking sessions to keep your griddle in, co in good condition. I chose to season my griddle because when I had my griddle on for a long extended period of time, we noticed that there were white spots building in the middle of the griddle. To me, out of all the experience I have, that was just a telltale sign that my griddle was getting dry. You need to avoid dry griddles. That's also a telltale sign of hot spots. Okay. Weber saying every two to three cooks. I couldn't agree more. Like when you're cooking, it's about maintenance. Think about the idea of using oil when you deep fry, right? If you only, f f uh, let's say, turn up to 350, 375, throw some frozen french fries in there, you can reuse the, reuse the oil, no problem. Same thing like the griddle. If I had it on right now, if I make some scrambled eggs, maybe a grilled cheese. I really don't have to really worry about the oil seasoning the process and all that stuff. But you throw Asian food down on here, there's a lot of sticky substances. You're harsh on it. It takes a lot of seasoning coat off there. You're trying to scrape all the burnt stuff off there and it gets through abuse. You might want to think about seasoning it. So it's not necessarily a perfect scenario, but I couldn't agree more with Weber. Every two to three cooks, that goes along with the idea of should you season your griddle? Maybe you don't have to, but just abandon the oil idea completely. I just don't think that's a long-term win-win. Just because something comes pre-seasoned does not mean that you don't have to maintain it. And that's my biggest pet peeve is, ma is maintenance. That way you don't have to go down with a grill brick and all that stuff. So I hope that clarifies some of the stuff. I hope you guys share this video. Um, like I said, you guys can laugh at me all you want to, but I do think there's harmful information floating around. And it's almost like people are so stuck to their guns that it's like it's their way or the highway. Obviously, people out there have had success both ways. But I do think overall what you're seeing is the griddle needs oil no matter if you do it in the beginning, do it in the middle or during the end, and you have to maintain it. That's gonna continue your griddle happiness and that's all what we're like here about, right? I don't want you to have a bad griddle experience. I don't want you to hate your griddle. I want you to love your griddle. You spent your hard earned money. As always, hit that join button down below. It's a membership program. We thank each and every one of you for taking time for doing so. Check us out on Instagram, check us out on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share with your friends. Peace. I'm gonna add some oil. And I'm going to season this probably two to three times. And then our next cook is going to be a Tinga grilled cheese burrito. So you guys can be able to look out for that one.